Welcome to Seven River Sports. I'm your host, Terry Erickson. Each week, an inside look into sports, wellness, and into fitness. Well, this week, the spotlight shines brightly on Logan High School. Two senior student athletes just finishing their basketball season. With me this week, Marcy Saffron and Allie Gesvain. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Just finishing the season, big win over Holman. Uh, and then a disappointing loss to Toma to end this season. An abrupt uh, ending, a, uh, a, a season that was not what you were hoping for, uh, an abbreviated season. Starting with um, uh, Marcy, thoughts on the season? Um, overall, I think it went pretty good. You know, all, first we had freshmen coming in had no idea like how the team worked and all that so as the like games progressed on we got better with hey you know we got this you know good well I didn't know this until uh, Marcy <laughs> walked into the studio this week she walked in with a pair of crutches she walked in with a brace on her knee she walked in uh, and I was like I was I had no idea but you had a setback uh, in the Holman game, the game that you won. Share that with us. So my sister passes me the ball. I'm going towards the hoop. My defender stops me. And I try to like jump back, pivot back, and then I realize she leaves a gap for me to go to the middle. So then I try to go to the middle. My leg locks up, twists like different ways. I hear a pop and I just collapsed to the floor and I just found out today I tore my ACL. Yeah, oh, and as we tape the show here, uh, one day after Valentine's Day on the 15th of February, you got the bad news. Yep. But uh, you have the kind of uh, spirit and the kind of uh, attitude to be able to overcome that and, uh, and perhaps get ready for spring season or maybe not. Um. It all depends on how my like physical therapy goes over after my surgery, but I think I'll be, with the help of my teammates for cross country and softball and all that, they'll help me motivate myself. Good, good. Allie gets me to know Allie really well also. And uh, reflections on the season, what, what are your thoughts? Um, I think, you know, like Marcy said, we had a lot of new New people, it was a pretty young team, not a lot of returners from last year, but um, so it was a little rough, you know, getting started with adjusting to the new team. We did, like, definitely improve as the season went on. I think it would have helped a lot if we would have got the chance to have more practices. You know, our season got cut short, but um, overall, I think we came together better at the end, just disappointing. Well, no school today on Monday, February 15th, uh, because teachers are uh, in uh, in-service training, and um, so you, you guys are used to that, though, because you're used to no yeah. school, because since March, almost a year ago, it's been uh, a very unusual, uh, unpredictable, uh, you're in school, you're out of school, you have a game, you don't have a game, but let's go back to... Uh, when this began back in March and the pandemic and it's lingered on again for almost a year. A lot of people have indicated to me, articles I've read, that their life has changed uh, in more than just the obvious ways. They've changed their attitude, they put things in perspective. Allie, have you, well, how has that changed your life? Um, you know, I definitely realized like all the things that I took for granted like during before this all happened, I didn't even really know if we were going to get, you know, um, fall sports got canceled. I wasn't sure if we were going to get to play basketball. So, and I, I guess I just realized that I was really grateful, like, to have, like, three years or two and a half before the <laughs> pandemic of, like, normal high school and sports. But I'm great, really grateful for the season we got this winter Putting, we got to play. Even though it was abbreviated. But yeah. I think back to my own high school years, my senior year, if that would have been taken away, that would have been highly uh, disappointing to say the least. And um, I know that a lot of people struggle with mental health issues and so on, depression, isolation, things like that, uh, as a result of virtual school, which doesn't really appeal to me and it doesn't appeal to most people because you want to be around friends, you want to be involved in activities, Marcy. 
Yeah, I guess like I kind of took for granted. Like at first, I was like, oh, you know, we'll probably get into school and all that. Then when I realized, oh, we're not going back to school, I was like, I'm gonna probably miss half my senior year just not talking to my friends. And that was kind of like at the point where I took everything serious, you know. You know, uh, the world has changed in many ways, ways and uh, one of them is uh, the, the, this country in crisis. Uh, authors have talked about journalists, writers, and one of the reasons is uh, the racial injustice and those kinds of things that have happened. And of course, you know, we're, we're a diverse community uh, and uh, all, it's affected all of us. Racial injustice, treating people with dignity and so on. Thoughts on that with you? As we move ahead, Allie? Um, I think it's definitely, like, something we still need to, like, focus on and not... It was, like, it had a lot of momentum, like, earlier in the year with all the protests and everything, and I think it's something that we still need to, like, talk about in schools and keep, like, keep moving forward with it and not, like, let it go back and be forgotten about until something happens again. Logan High School, a, uh, certainly a, an example of uh, diversity. United Nations of young people. That's how I view it. Um, respecting other people. And there's all, kids of all kinds of colors uh, at Logan High School. How do, how do you take those lessons learned by maybe some of the the things that were happened that were inappropriate uh, and help you uh, in your attitudes, Marcy? Mm. <laughs> well, I kind of just looked at it like, you know, this isn't like we shouldn't forget about this. You know, people are getting treated wrong. So I just like, you know, just got you got to stand above that. You got to stand above that. Treat people the way you want to be treated. That's all you got to know take the high road rather than the, the low road, which uh, is indifference and it is uh, 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 going back to, as you said, to the way we perhaps uh, archaic way of treating people. Well, again, our guests this week, Marcy uh, Safran and Allie Gesvain from Logan High School. You know, athletes are on a platform. Uh, athletes, uh, it, to much that is given, much is expected academically and athletically. Uh, you're on a platform. Young people go into the games, young people see, see you, uh, adults see you, you're on a platform. And with that uh, is accountability. Thoughts on, on the, uh, the pressures perhaps of being an, a student athlete, Allie? Um, I think it's something that like help, like motivates me being an athlete. Um, I guess it like makes me want to do better in school. Just um, there's definitely like some pressure. The teacher, like all the teachers, they most of them like know me. They, I guess, and it just kind of holds me accountable to do good in school. Is it hard to be a student athlete where you're on a platform? Not that you think you're better than anybody, but you, mm -hmm. again, you've been given a gift, and. You, uh, pe people look up to you. Yeah. Marcy. I guess it's just hard being like an athlete and a student because you kind of have to put schoolwork first and then all the sports just because the teachers, like Ali said, know you. So, like, if they know you play basketball, they look up to you. Like, you know, you got obviously because of school, you have to have a GPA of some sort to still play. So, they're like kind of looking out for you and you don't want them. Like in my opinion, my mom like looks at my grades always, so I'm at the step of already, I'm emailing my teachers and all that, just looking out for myself and making sure my mom doesn't yell at me. <laughs> <laughs> so the support system at home sometimes may be annoying to yeah. some people because you know, I, I was there, but it's you, uh, you know that she's looking out for your best interest. Yeah. And she's... So she's not really, she's motivating you in a way that you maybe don't always appreciate, but she, yeah. she's encouraging. Yeah. Well, Marcy, uh, three sport athlete, highest honor roll, National Honor Society. Is it hard to be both an exceptional student and an, and an exceptional athlete? Mm, kind of has like its differences, I would say. Just because, you know, high, you're like, 
sports, like, because that's my main, like, not my main focus. But, you know, I would say, like, trying just to work those two out together, mm -hmm. it's somewhat difficult, but once you find a balance in between school and sports, you, you got it. And it's, it's a sense of accomplishment. I yeah. mean, it's a good feeling to be able to do that. Well, Allie, three-sport athlete also, highest honor roll, four times uh, a uh, varsity letter, all academic, captain, most improved leadership. I mean, <laughs> whoa, I can't even get through them all, but you've accomplished a lot. Hard? Um, I mean, yeah, I guess I spent to put a lot of time into all like school and basketball time outside of practice and everything and other sports too <laughs> yeah other sports um i guess i just like it i like being busy keeping busy sports help me like create a schedule to you know i got to get my homework done before practice that so i can get to bed early and it just it really helped me like create a schedule stay on top of things so yeah you might I've not know this but work habits time management that's the key mm -hmm. two words time management in order to be a student athlete will uh propel you into success as you get older. Well, on the other side of this break, more here on Seven River Sports with Marcy Saffron and Allie Gesme. With our busy lives, it's a comfort to know that we can still remember loved ones in a traditional way with a monument. Lewiston Monuments in Lewiston, Minnesota has been helping families purchase a monument for over four generations. You'll find a large selection of beautiful granite, marble, and bronze monuments all at competitive prices. And they're a full service company, so they also do straightening, cleaning, and repair of monuments. Stop in or call for a no obligation consultation or visit LewistonMonument.com for more information. You know, the thing I'm most proud of when I think about our company is the reputation that we've been able to build in this community. Our technicians have done a great job going out and performing magnificent jobs for the customer. And our customers have rewarded us with some really great reviews online. We have over 150 five-star reviews online right now. Our technicians do a great job out there and our reviews show it. We can say without hesitation, when you choose Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning, you'll be glad you did. Athletes, Marcy Saffron and Allie Gezvane. Well, I talked to head coach Abby Weedman uh, during um, the last couple of days. Here's what she said about Allie. Allie is always positive, hardworking, extremely coachable. Whatever is asked of her, she will do. Doesn't surprise me. What's your thought on that? Um, it's really nice to hear Abby say, you know, I, that's what I try to do. Um, I practice all the time. I always try to give my best effort and help the team the best I can. So when you walk off the court, you look in the mirror, you get ready to move on for the day or the evening, you you feel good about what you've done. You, you've, uh, your friend is in the mirror. Yeah, so. that's, yeah. And Marcy leads by example by working hard, brings a lot of energy to the program at uh, practices and games. Uh, energy, enthusiasm, two key words. And of course, along with Allie, uh, seniors certainly missed uh, at the conclusion of the season and as you move on. What are your thoughts on that complimentary <laughs> statement, Marcy? Well, I guess, like, on, usually on the bench, like, I'm really, like, energy-wise, because, you know, just trying to get the team motivated, you know, if this is a game, you know, we have to stay positive throughout this game, just keep the energy up, because a lot of these freshmen coming in, like, usually just, you know, sit down, like, clap, but it's like, once you get to the varsity level, it's like really intense once you're like facing like in the playoffs or you're versing central or our rival, you know, you gotta keep up the energy because this year we didn't have the crowds, but there's a lot more people cheering, so. When you look at teams that have that positive culture, not everybody has it, by yeah. the way, 
But when those that strive for that positive culture, the turbo um, men and women have it because I've officiated their games is like, whoa, they bring incredible amount of uh, energy. Um, and it's important because of a limited amount of fans, too, yeah. by the way. No cheerleaders, no band, only three or four, sometimes only two people per family attending. So obviously, uh, there's more focus on team culture and team uh, uh, enthusiasm and uh, supporting others. Is that hard, though, to do that on the bench if you're not playing and uh, you're, you're not doing well in terms of the scoreboard? Um, I want to say no, because like, I have positive energy throughout like basketball I don't you know I don't really care if we're losing or not it's just are we staying positive even though we're losing because you know as we said we were building up on our team culture so if we keep the team culture positive and all that so forth like all the other Logan people <laughs> like are gonna well all the Logan undergrads are still gonna like bring that on to other like teams below them well, so the that, positive stays with us something tells me just watching you knowing you around school alley you're the same way in fact one of your qualities as a leader uh, and you shared this in your profile is picking people up your job and my job uh, in, in this world is to elevate other people pick them up in any way you can how do you do that um it's just you know, if a bad something or someone on the court makes a mistake or something like that, it's just important that we all are like staying positive because one thing that somebody does can impact like the whole team. Like one comment or one like, um, one like I don't know mistake or yeah. criticism. Yeah, that and then if they get down on themselves, it can impact the whole team. So just like high fiving them if they like make a mistake, you know, turn the ball over, like just saying, let's get back on defense, stuff like that. And you're a captain, exactly, mm -hmm. you're a captain, so with that uh, comes, uh, you, you, your leadership needs to be uh, elevated and you need to have mm -hmm. a peak performance, not only on the floor, but in terms of your, uh, your ability to lead. I mean, that's what comes with being a captain. Well, um, Let's move to the next chapter of your life, which will occur after you graduate in the month of May. Talk about that. Um, I haven't completely decided what school I'm going to yet, but um, I do have like a couple top choices, and um, I'm thinking about playing basketball at a Division three school, and you know, just carrying forward like what I've learned in high school basketball, being coachable. Um, and then also getting the chance to like study, um, you know, find my interest and in hopefully a career path that I can. So make. if that doesn't work out, uh, you have another option too, which would be to that big school in uh, <laughs> Madison. Yeah, yeah, I'm kind of weighing those two choices right now, but you know, I'm not sure. I'm kind of leaning more towards playing basketball right now, just because. You know, I love basketball so much. Good. And well, our grandson Julian is in Madison, so you guys can hook <laughs> up. You know. <laughs> so uh, he had an outstanding uh, career in multiple sports, mm -hmm. and uh, so and then um, your career. Where, where will uh, your you you get on to college and, and major and career? What will that be? Um, I'm thinking about majoring in biology, but I kind of. Um, you know, I'm interested in like environmental sciences and then also um, like maybe physical therapy, but you know, I'm, I'm taking an environmental science class right now, so I'm kind of trying to see like what career opportunities could Good. be. Good. Well, you have yeah. a long time to make up your yeah. mind, but um, y y similar, um, you, have, you have some similarities mm -hmm. in terms of liking the outdoors. Mm -hmm. uh, don't you, Marcy? Yeah. And uh, you, and you're you've already sort of defined what's gonna what you're gonna do next. Yeah. So I'm planning to go to Stevens Point, just to in their program they have a wildlife management. I'm got over these few years I've gotten really big into hunting, and like I've heard stories from people in my hunting groups that you know people aren't like doing stuff right, and I want to protect these deer for future generations can still hunt. So I want to become a resource officer for the environment. Good for you. And there's something, this is, this is so uh, incredible, revealing and uh, exciting. 
uh, when I read on your profile one something that maybe our viewers don't know about Marcy and that was hunting yeah talk about that well I guess my grandpa and my dad hunt and you know I just wanted to go out and try you know experience like just being outdoors not having your cell phones or anything so I went out with my dad my first year and then my second year I went out with my grandpa and there's like 30 plus deer around us and I see one that I'm trying to get and it just didn't work out because it kind of had shoulder turn and then the deer I actually shot turned around and I got my first deer ever. It was pretty <laughs> exciting. With? Um, a rifle. Okay, the first time you've ever, not the first time you ever hunted, close, the first time you, you shot a 10 point buck? Oh, not the, my 10 point <laughs> buck was with my arrow. Oh, well listen to that. Yeah. So she, uh, uh, both bow and arrow and uh, and gun. <laughs> yep. Wow, that's that's something uh, to to remember, huh? Yeah. Well, wh what's something people don't maybe know about Allie? Um, I I don't know. I guess I travel. I like to travel. I go to out to the west in Idaho every summer because my sister and my nephews live out there. So beautiful country. But take Marcy mm -hmm. because a lot of hiking <laughs> out there. Yeah, I can shoot an out <laughs> next time. <laughs> exactly. Well. Um, what, what does Allie do when she's, uh, what are your hobbies when you're not studying or playing sports? Um, I like to, you know, when it's nice out, I like to get outside, I like to go hiking. I like to be on the river too a lot in the summer. You know, skiing, water skiing, snow skiing. You know, you, you're, a, you're both deep uh, young ladies uh, that have a lot of, uh, a, a lot of gifts uh, academically and so on. Um, and you have a favorite saying, too, that's kind of been an inspiration to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you want me to say it? Um, um, it's, it's, well, one of my favorites. Blanking. That, uh, one of my favorites if, that uh, was on the very first ESPY Awards. Mm -hmm. Gave a speech on never quit. Never, never, never quit. He died two months after giving that speech in 2003. Yeah. Um, I liked the quote, you have to have enthusiasm for life, make a goal, and work for it. Yeah. Along and those lines with and Jim uh, Belvano. Jim Belvano. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember that uh, when he was on there that evening, and again, he passed away a couple uh, months later, and then the Jimmy V Foundation um, supporting cancer research has been a, a big part. I've supported that also. Um, so in other words, don't be lukewarm in mm -hmm. anything you do. Just yeah. go in with as much enthusiasm as you possibly can. You ever heard of the um, Astronaut in the Ocean by Mask Wolf? It's like, I wonder if our viewers ever heard of that. Yeah. Is that a little bit about you? Um, I just listened to random songs, like that one kind of caught my interest. I don't know why, if it was just with the beats or whatever. But it, it turned out to be my favorite song. I've never had a favorite song until that moment. <laughs> so the astronaut is up high and the ocean <laughs> is yeah, north and yeah, the opposite south. So astronauts in the ocean? I don't know. <laughs> is, there a, is there some meaning to that? I don't know. You would have to <laughs> ask a songwriter. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, any uh, advice that you might give to young people uh, at the middle school, the elementary school, and how to um, take that journey uh, to high school and become a good student and become a good athlete? Just, you know, listen to your teachers. They always want what's best for you, you know? Like, they don't want you to fail in life. They want you to learn and succeed in life. They don't want you down, you know, regretting every decision you made. They want you up high where you're actually enlightening those decisions you made in high school. Allie is a guest speaker at the at uh, the Northside Elementary School, and all of a sudden, uh, it's your turn to speak to all those <laughs> kindergarten through uh, fifth graders and give them some advice. Mm -hmm. What are you going to tell them? Um, I would tell them just to, you know, enjoy everything they do and come do it with energy and have a passion. And if you have a passion for something, just try your best at it at all times give your best effort and enjoy it because you know you don't know if something might happen. <laughs>
You indicated, Allie, that your dad and previous captains and coaches have inspired you. Mm -hmm. How have they done that? Um, just by like lead, setting a good example. Um, I mean, my dad's the one who showed me the quote by Jim Valvano. Just you know, he um, is always enthusiastic. You know, my coaches are always talking about being, you know, coming with energy, having energy, and previous captains have definitely displayed that, and they left like a big mark on me. You know. Dad and grandmother have inspired Marcy? Yep. My grandma actually passed away last year in July, but she, you know, even though she's not with me, she inspired me because she used to live in Florida and worked in the American Legion, and she, you know, she would always say, never look at someone just because of their past. Always, like, look at what they're doing now. That You know, you don't look at people's past and you know, like the saying, don't judge a book by its cover. Or don't give up on people. Yeah. Even though they made it's made mistakes. Well, it's a pleasure to, this week to have uh, Marcy Safran and Allie Gesvain, two tremendous leaders and student athletes from Logan High School. I want to thank you for being on the show. Appreciate thank you for having me. All right. We'll be back with some closing thoughts and uh, a film clip from a recent game right after this. You know, the thing I'm most proud of when I think about our company is the reputation that we've been able to build in this community. Our technicians have done a great job going out and performing magnificent jobs for the customer. And our customers have rewarded us with some really great reviews online. We have over 150 five-star reviews online right now. Our technicians do a great job out there and our reviews show it. We can say without hesitation, when you choose Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning, you'll be glad you did. When you're faced with the decision of selecting a monument to honor someone dear to you, call Lewiston Monuments for a no-obligation consultation. Lewiston Monument is a full-service monument company, serving families in Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin for over four generations. You'll find beautiful granite, marble, and bronze memorials, all at competitive prices. Their experts can help you design the perfect and unique memorial. Lewiston Monument. Call today or on the web at lewistonmonument.com. Welcome back to Seven River Sports. Well, Rick and Art were courtside at the D.B. Reinhardt Activity Center on the campus of Aquinas High School on Saturday for the sectional championship. The Blue Golds versus St. Croix Central, champions of the Heart of the North Conference. Dave Donarski's Blue Golds were well prepared, taking a 50-35 lead into halftime. They also controlled the second half, outscoring the Saints by 11 points. Junior J.C. Weisbrod showed her true colors, scoring 36 points. Three other Blue Goals were in double figures. Macy Donarski with 16, Brie Barr and Elena Bagneski each contributed 10. St. Croix Falls was led by Emily McCurdy with 13. The undefeated Blue Goals move on to the state tournament playing Westfield on Friday at 10.45 a.m. in Oshkosh with the championship game to follow at 2 p.m. St. Croix Falls ends their impressive season with a 22-2 and record. Final, Blue Goals 84 and the Saints 58. Congratulations also to Bangor and Onalaska. Both those teams in the area advance to the state tournament. Also, we'll be covering boys' sectional games. Beginning on Thursday, we'll be courtside at Aquinas as they play Northwestern at 7 p.m. Well, that's it this week here on Seven River Sports. I'm your host, Terry Erickson, hoping that you will have an active and a healthy week ahead.